Hey, hey everyone, I'm Brian. This is Watch Complications. Thanks for checking out the video. If you want to take a look at all the things I do watches, look at my website, watchcomplications.com, and also follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications. I notice things look a little bit different behind me. Usually my workbench is behind me, and I've actually moved it over there. I'll flip around the camera and show you that in a second, but I think I mentioned in an earlier video that I'm going to be rearranging the space, and it's going to be more conducive to better videos and that sort of thing, so I'm super excited about that, and you're going to see, again, that evolve over the next few videos as I kind of finalize the setup. So my previous video was an extended edition review of the Feynman 1 and I'm really liking the one-eyed panda I've got it on a gray lizard strap now as opposed to the brown that's shown in the video really love it on the gray it really suits it much better than the brown but anyway go back and check out that video but it was long so what I wanted to do for this video was something short and what I decided on was another how it works video on complications which I'm going through I've done the date and I've done the day date and I decided we're gonna do a video on hacking so the hacking complication, real quick wrist check before we get into the dirty details on that. I am wearing my Christopher Ward C65 Classic Vintage in Black. And one of my most worn, particularly over the summer, if it's, if it's hot and sticky, you've got to have a diver on. This is on a Vario uh, Cordura single piece Zulu style. I've done a review on these as well. I'll link that in the video. Let's get to looking at the hacking complication, which is one of the more useful ones when it comes to time setting and whatnot. But uh, we'll talk about those details. Let's do it. What I want to start with is talking about what the hacking complication is, show you some examples of hacking and non-hacking movements, and then we're going to take an up-close look at what it looks like under the hood. No, this is not a 2893, which is an ETA GMT movement. We're going to look up close at a Saleta uh, 210. Now, hacking, what it is, and you probably already know this if you're into watches, particularly mechanical watches, is that when you pull the crown out to the time setting position, the seconds hand will stop. How does that help? Well, it helps with time setting, right? You let the second hand get to 12 o'clock, you pull it out, that seconds hand will stop, and then you can set the time to the exact minute, you know, against whether it's the atomic clock, the clock on your wall, your phone, so your time is exact. If your watch does not have the hacking complication, it doesn't mean you can't set your watch exactly to the second. And I'll show you this trick in just a sec. But this first example, this is a Vario Silver Empire. I got a review on this. I'll link it up above as well. Let's pop in here closely. So this has a Miyota movement. It's a 6T33. You see the number there. You can see it's running, the balance wheel and escapement going uh, over there. And if I pull this out to the time setting position, you can see the seconds hand is still running. It's because this is a non-hacking movement. However, let me show you a fun little trick. Again, many of you probably didn't know this about non-hacking movements. So what you do, if you want to set this exactly, is you'll have to see with your exact movement how many seconds it is. But when it gets to about 15 seconds, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put backward pressure on the minute hand. And so I'm going to start going backwards with it and then just hold it and leave that pressure on and usually sometime between uh 10 15 seconds see that's between just under 10 seconds you can see the seconds hand stopped i'm just holding backward pressure on the minute hand and i let go there it goes when you do this thing where i'm kind of going backwards a little bit with the minute hand after about 10 seconds five to ten seconds it stops and that's going to vary a little bit by movement if you figure out what that time is on your specific movement you can set this exactly just like you would if you had the hacking complication so fun trick all right so let's look at another example and i'm not going to say anything about this watch right now you're going to see more on this in the future but yeah it's a vacheron constantin and I am going to, again, show you more about this in the future. So yes, there's a VC in front of the camera right now. Now, notice we've got the seconds hand. Now, this is high-end horology, right? So this is, this is Miyota. This is a very basic, hand-wound, mass-produced movement. And it's, you know, not haute horology or anything. I love all kinds of movements, particularly hand-wound mechanicals. But we're talking about night and day in terms of the R&D, the innovation, and the complications involved on these particular watches. So these are opposite ends of the horological spectrum. A lot of the haute horology pieces, whether that's a VC, uh, an AP, a Patek, uh, a lot of them don't have hacking complications on their movements. 
So I want to pull this out to, to the time setting and notice that the seconds hand did not stop. The caliber in this is the VC1137 and it's got a lot of great complications. It's got the grand date, it's got small seconds at six, it's got the chronograph, but it doesn't have hacking. Just like the Miyota movement, if I put backward pressure on the minute hand, that seconds hand is going to stop for me, even though it's non-hacking. So again, turning clockwise will move the minute hand backwards. And you will see when I put that pressure on, it's instant on the VC. It actually runs back a little bit. See how it's kind of, it's kind of halted there. And then as soon as I let go or move the hand, minute hand forward, you can see the seconds hand takes off again. It's almost instantaneous. Notice it runs back about a second, two seconds. And so you can get exact on a non-hacking movement. Just a little trick you may or may not know about. So that's a couple examples. This Miyota 6T33, and this is a VC1137, non-hacking. We got Hood Horology, and we've got run-of-the-mill, you know, mass-produced movement from Japan. Let's look at the complication in a couple of examples. Move this out of the way. Let's start with this. This is the Marlowe Haskell. Again, I link to a review that I have of this. This is like the second review I did in my life for the channel. And this has got an ETA movement in it. So it's an ETA hand wound movement. And you can see it's running and it is a hacking movement. So what you're used to seeing if it's hacking is you pull it out, seconds hand stops, which yeah, it makes time setting a little bit more quick and easy if you have the hacking complication you know if you're setting it against another clock then say one of these that don't you have to you know do a little bit of quirky give and take with the minute hand to get that seconds hand to stop but that is uh, what we mean when we say hacking is boom stops when you pull out to the time setting position push the crown back in it starts to go now the movement we're going to look at is the same one that's in 10.6 glass I've shown you this before as well i love wearing this watch it's you know completely open on the front and back exhibition back and that's one of the reasons why i chose it um, i also chose the Saleta sw210 because what i have is a spare 210 movement that i use as sort of my tinkering movement for practicing it doing things like taking uh the the gear train apart and putting it back together and keyless works part put it back together sort of my practice movement i use an old scrap movement that had a broken screw and extracted the screw from it so it's just a it's a movement it's a tinkering movement everyone should have one if you're getting into watches and you're wanting to get into tools and playing around with them then you know get yourself a movement these aren't crazy expensive they're about a hundred bucks good swiss movement and you can do lots of practicing on it no you're gonna mess things up and scratch it up get fingerprints on it ruin it but it gives you something to play with you can also practice on cheap chinese mechanical movements too now this is hacking so i pull this out to time setting and you can see the levers in the keyless works move and the gears and this second hand is going to stop push it back in and off we go now what does this look like how is it actually implemented? How does it work? Okay, so we see the balance wheel right there. And notice, you can kind of see it. I'm going to point this out and get a little screwdriver here because it's got a tip sharp enough to kind of see where things are at right here. Now we've got the mainspring underneath the here. We've got the click, and this is all the winding mechanism to get power from the crown when we're, we're turning it to wind the main spring. You can see right underneath of this wheel right here is a little lever sticking out underneath of it. Okay, so I want you to look in this location. What's going to happen when you pull out the crown to the time setting position is this lever comes down and very gently, lightly touches the balance wheel and stops it. And if you stop the balance wheel, then you stop power from being released and it will stop the gear train. Okay, so watch that location. And there it is. Now you can see it better once it's moved down and it's touching the balance wheel. There it is. Just a nice little nudge, stops it from releasing power, gear train stops, second hand stops. Okay, push it back in. You're going to see the levers slide back up. and releases power, and now that second's hand is moving again. What I want to do, again, how does it work? Let's look under the hood. 
So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I'm, I'm, a, I'm an engineer, a software engineer specifically, but learning how things work is just, it's, oh, I just love it. Again, this is not a 2893, but this is a Celita SW210. And you can see that right there, SW210-1. Again, this is just a spare movement I have to practice at watchmaking. And there's only a couple things that I've actually put together to show, to illustrate this and how it works, the hacking complication, is I've put the keyless works together on the front side of the plate and then flipped it over. And this is the reverse, the back side of the plate. And for example, uh, the mainspring barrel goes here and we've got the locations for the rest of the gear train here. And all I have on here is the balance wheel assembly and the stop lever. And that's all that's on the back of here, just to illustrate how this works. So I put the keyless works together. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second, just for illustrative purposes. You can see what it looks like on the other side to make this work. You can imagine this balance wheel moving and I can give it a shake. See, boop, 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 it's going, going, going like so. It'll bounce a little bit. You can see the hairspring escapement's not there, obviously just the balance wheel assembly, but we'll show it how it stops up close. So the part that does the work is called a stop lever. There it is, right there. Now you can see the thing in its entirety. Again, you're gonna see different names for it, sometimes typically called a stop lever, because what does it do? It's a lever that stops the balance wheel. So imagine this watch is running, right? The seconds hand is moving. It's currently in the running position. We have two pinions, they're gears here. The first one here on the left that's around the stem is the sliding pinion. That's because it slides back and forth as you pull the crown in and out between you know, time setting and winding. And then when it's in the winding position, which is usually all the way in, then you can see that the teeth on the sliding pinion have made contact with teeth on the winding pinion. And then so whenever you turn this, it would be turning uh, the ratcheting wheel and winding the mainspring, you know, if that was all here intact. So those two pinions are important. And notice that the stop lever, the end of it is sitting in this notch inside of the sliding pinion. And so whenever we pull the crown out, the sliding pinion is gonna disengage from the winding pinion and slide to the left, and it will push the stop lever down and make contact with the balance wheel. So let's see how that looks. Let's get that balance wheel moving. Yay, there it goes. And it's not got anything on top of it, so I gotta be a little bit careful when I pull this out. You can see it move, boom. See how it snapped down, made contact with the balance wheel sliding pinion slid to the left you can see there are teeth in there and those teeth engage with an identical scent of teeth on the winding pinion which is now completely disengaged so if i turn this i'm not going to get any winding of the mainspring i'm going to get time setting because on the other side of the keyless works because the sliding pinion has moved the sliding pinion is now going to make contact with the minute wheel on the other side of the plate, on the front side of the plate, and you can then move the time to whatever you want it to be, minutes and hours. I could shake this around now. The balance wheel is not going to move because the stop lever is making ever so slight contact with it. Okay. And you can see how easy that popped out. It's tiny. It's so tiny. How tiny that is on my finger. Watches, what a world, what a world. All right, I gotta put this back in there so I can show you the rest of this. All right, so I've gotten good enough at this that I can get that back in there pretty quick. Just took about two seconds. So there we go. Now, whenever I slide it back, I'm actually gonna put a little bit of pressure on the center there just so it doesn't fly out, because it'll do that. So I'm gonna, you can see the lever move there. Whenever I push the crown back in, you'll see it move up. Again, this has got plates and other stuff over on top of it that will keep it from popping out and falling all over the place whenever it's all put together. But now it's just all out in the open. Now I wanna flip it over so it's gonna come out of there anyway. So show that and then I'll push it back. See? So I popped it back out. 
And I just want to show you the other side of this. Let me zoom back out to, and again, if I was working on this or cared about this movement, this is my practice movement, so I don't care about my fingerprints and things getting all over it. I want to flip this around and just show you what else I've got put together on it, just the keyless works. As you can see on 10.6 glass, same keyless works. It's somewhat covered by a couple of the other components there, but when this is in normal position, position zero, you can see that the winding and sliding pinion are in contact. That way, if I wind this, this gearing is turning the mainspring. And then if I pull out the setting position, which moves the lever, you can see there's a lot of things moving here with this. The sliding pinion pops to the left. Now it's not engaged directly with the winding pinion. You can see it's moving kind of freely there. But now this is at a position where you can see there's this spot here where wheels are sitting related to the minute and hour track and it will set the time for us. So that's a little bit about the hacking complication under the hood. Well, that's a hacking complication. Pretty simple idea and it's pretty straightforward, but hopefully you learned something, got something out of this little quick video. I'm Brian, this is Watch Complications. Check out the website, watchcomplications.com. Subscribe here and follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications out.